Not so long ago, I did a test with an all NVMe array with an Unraid to see what would happen. And during those tests, I actually managed to kill a few, or a couple actually, of my NVMe drives that I was using for that test. And ever since then, I've just been using two SSDs and a RAID 0 as my Unraid cache on one of my servers. And I've been kind of shopping around for other NVMe SSDs to buy, but I haven't really found the right SSD. There are so many now that it's becoming really hard to make a good decision. I'm sure any of them would be fine uh, in the long run, but it's hard to trust some of the benchmarks because typically you only see one gigabyte uh, on the benchmarks and that doesn't really tell me much. Uh, yeah, I understand that most NVMEs are fast, but what happens when you actually write a file to these things and the file's like 40 to 100 gigabytes in size and you're trying to write that file over a long sustained period. It's hard to find those answers most of the time. So I stepped out on a limb and I borrowed a Micron 2300 NVMe to see if this is a good candidate for a potential cache. Now, if this is, the goal would be to get three more of these and stick it in here and then we do a RAID 10 for my unraid cache again and I would be able to have uh, those one gigabyte per second speeds 100% uh, of the time, all of the time, due to the size of the uh, cache pool. Now, in theory, this should be able to do that, but will it be able to sustain that? So the Micron 2300 is a TLC NVMe, and I have no idea if it has DRAM on it or if it's cacheless, whatever it may be. And that's what we're going to find out today. Can we have long sustain writes with files that are between 40 to 90 gigabytes? Uh, but before we do that, we need to go shopping because we need some parts for one of my servers. So let's go. All right, and our shopping list includes a 10 gig NIC and also NVMe adapter. So, oh, here we go. Here's an Intel X540 T2, I believe. This should get the job done. And where is that? Oh, there it is. And our NVMe adapter. And the last thing we need for our testing is a server. I guess we don't really need a server. I kind of need a test bench is what I think I need to do all this tests. But a server will suffice for now uh, because ideally this is what I, not this server, but I'd be using it in a server anyway uh, for all of my uh, NVMe cache needs. Honestly, this part's pretty simple. So here is our expansion card, PCI expansion card. So it allows us to sit, stick in a uh, full 16 railed uh, PCI card, daughter card, whatever it may be, and then a uh, 8X in here if we need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the um, NVMe SSD and stick it in there. And then our 10 gig adapter on this side, it doesn't really matter. They're gonna get the same bandwidth anyway, or similar bandwidth anyway. Um, so we're just gonna stick these in, I think. Oh boy. We'll take this over to the server room and we can begin uh, some of our tests. Okay, so first things first, I did wanna show you guys the benchmarks that I did anyway. Uh, for those of you that are curious, I think you'll benefit from this most. Um, I figured it would kind of be out of place if I didn't include the benchmarks. And honestly, I think these scores are pretty respectable uh, for this kind of SSD or NVMe SSD. Um, you can find these used for about 100 bucks, so it's not a terrible price uh, for the performance, and given that it's a terabyte, I think it's perfectly adequate. Now let's take a look at some real-world testing where I use my gaming computer that has a 10 gig NIC and a Samsung 970 Pro and transferred a 90, or about a 94 gigabyte zip file and a 43 gigabyte video over to that cache drive in that server. And then I also did a pull from the cache drive back over to the gaming computer um, just to kind of give us an idea of what it would actually be like when doing the read and writes. So here they are. And honestly, I was pretty surprised that it managed to do as well as it did. Um, when downloading, or I'm sorry, when uploading to the server, we were seeing at minimum 700 megabytes per second. And what's most interesting about this test is that we're not seeing any kind of drop off after the initial high speed burst of 800 plus megabytes per second, um, which is really nice to see because I've seen a lot of NVMe drives in the past where you'll start off really high, uh, have a nice burst, and then the DRAM cache will run out and then the SSD just tanks in performance and you're pretty much left with nothing better than a regular SSD. But in this case, I'm pleasantly surprised it managed to make it pretty much all the way through staying above 700 megabytes per second. I'm sure if we had 
two, three, or four of these in a RAID 0 or 10, we would get full one gigabit per second, no problem. And as far as um, downloading from the server back to 970 Pro, um, as you can see here, still a very respectable transfer speed and obviously the 970 Pro is gonna perform well in the write speed or read speed of the um, Micron 2300 is still very real, it's still very nice. So no problems there as far as I can tell. I've also considered picking up some used SSDs from Intel. Um, I can find them all over eBay. They're fairly expensive for one terabyte, but they'll have incredibly high endurance uh, writes there. So I don't have to worry about them dying too soon, especially since they're used. I've also considered some Samsung and or Intel add-in cards. Uh, they're PCIe based, of course. Uh, that would be pretty sweet. They're a little expensive and I would only get one of those instead of four NVMe drives uh, for my adapter or just like a or four SSDs. So that would be much cheaper, but I have no idea how the performance of those things are. Uh, mostly because I haven't looked into it. I'm sure there's benchmarks available. And I also could, you know, just get a Sabrent Rocket generation, PCI generation four uh, NVMe drive and see how that performs. I'm sure that one drive would be perfect, uh, but I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I'd like to have a RAID 1 at a minimum, but it's not too big of a deal because everything's on a battery backup, so it may not even matter. Uh, so I don't know, maybe you guys should let me know what you would do by leaving some comments below, uh, you know, with your suggestions, and we'll kind of go forward slowly trying to figure out uh, the best game plan here. It's not something I need critically because I can just be patient, but at the same token, it would be nice to have. And with all that being said, I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.